Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Death Prophet. So Death Prophet is one of the most popular heroes right now in the meta. It's pretty much played in almost every single role, but we're going to be focusing on the mid lane and off lane version of this hero because for the most part, this hero has been played in those two core roles. For most of Dota's history, it's been played in the mid lane, and then only recently has it transitioned to an off lane hero. Like a lot of other ranged mid laners like Viper, DK, these kinds of things, Death Prophet has transitioned to an off laner as well. But we're going to be focusing on those two roles, and I'm not going to differentiate between those two roles very much because you kind of do the same thing regardless. You have the same abilities, same strengths and weaknesses, you do the same thing with team fighting, you buy the same items generally, it's kind of the same concepts apply to either role. So, how do we think about Death Prophet in general? Well, the first main way you can think about this hero is that this hero has one of the best team fight ultimates in the game. It does insane damage, it takes towers very quickly. When you pop this ultimate, it's not like a Ravage or something like that, it's more like a Terrorblade Metamorphosis. It's hero focused, it's centered around the hero, it follows you around, it lasts for a long duration, and you basically are impossible to fight into. It's very, very hard to just, you know, man fight this hero or run into this hero when the ultimate is focused. So, there are two main ways to counter that big strength with this hero. The first is obviously running away, disengaging. Once she pops her ultimate, they're just waiting till it's done. That's similar to Terrorblade, you know, waiting till Metamorphosis is done, waiting till this exorcism, her ultimate is done, then you can re-engage, you can fight. The other main way is once she pops it is to burst her down full to zero. And that can be kind of difficult because she usually buys BKB, but she also has another ability that allows her to kind of drain health from multiple heroes around her. So she doesn't really do much right-click damage. She doesn't have a great right-click animation. She mainly uses her spells to damage. She's also a very fast hero, and she buys BKB, so once she pops her ultimate, she can run you down. She can um, drain your health. She can do extra spell damage. She can silence you. She has a silence ability as well. She's very annoying in this way, so you kind of have to either choose your poison. You have to run away, try to disengage, which can be somewhat difficult, and she or you have to burst her down full to zero, stun her, chain stun her, do a lot of burst magic or physical damage, these kinds of things, which also can be very difficult as well. Um, so that's the main way to think about Death Prophet. That's her strengths, and that's the main ways that you can think about countering her. Now let's look at her abilities and see how they work. So now that we understand Death Prophet in general, we can take a look at her abilities and see how she's able to be that good spell damage hero that's really, really hard to fight into with that big teamfight ultimate. So first we're going to take a look at Crypt Swarm. This is a pretty straightforward spell. Basically, you cast it in an AoE, and in a cone, these bats fly out, and they can do damage. We'll put free spells on here. You do damage to everything in that AoE, so this is going to be your main spell you're using in the lane to harass, to secure CS, to farm, all these kinds of things, but it does significant damage later on as well, so it can't be underestimated in that way. It's doing magical damage, scales with levels, all these kinds of things. Next, we're going to take a look at Silence. So Silence is another pretty straightforward and simple ability. Basically, has a cast range here, and you just shoot out a little projectile. has a cast animation as well, and then everything in that AoE where it lands is silenced. And the silence is really, really long once you max it out. This is probably one of the best silences in the game because it's AoE and because of the duration. It can be very, very good against a lot of mid-heroes, even with one point. Um, it can offer you a lot of, you know, offensive capability, defensive capability against a lot of spirit heroes, other mids that rely on spells, all these kinds of things. Just a really, really good part of this hero's kit that can't be underestimated. But these two spells, rather simple, rather straightforward, and now we're going to move on to Spirit Siphon, and this is one of the kind of recently added spells to this hero. Maybe it was like, it might have been five years ago at this point, but um, it wasn't a spell for a long time, and then they added this, and this made this hero a lot better, a lot harder to fight into. So what Spirit Siphon does, is you can see you have a bunch of charges, um, you can cast it multiple times on different heroes, and what it does is it basically just drains their HP. But it drains their HP not as flat damage, it actually does percentage-based damage. So the more um, HP the enemy has, the tankier they are, the more damage you're actually doing. And that's also good because it doesn't just drain their HP, it also heals you as well. So I gave the Axe a Rapier here, so I'll right-click the uh, Death Prophet there a couple times. And then you can see that, actually we'll refresh real quick so the Axe isn't dead so I don't just like kill him. Um... So I'll right-click the Death Prophet there, and you can see when I Spirit Siphon the Axe, now I'm draining HP, a significant amount of HP, and then if I drain this dummy target, it's like impossible for me to actually even kill this Death Prophet with a Rapier because of how much HP I'm getting from draining this target. Now, the dummy target does have 5.6k HP, but you can see how, you know, the tankier the enemy gets, the better it is for you because you're doing more damage and you're going to be able to sustain through even more right-click damage, spell damage because of these Spirit Siphons. So really the only way to counter this, because it's magical and because it doesn't pierce BKB, is to buy BKB because you can see it's not dispellable. So 
The only way to counter it, if you want to fight her, is to buy BKB or to run out of the AoE. So you can see there, I cast it on Axe. If he runs around, the only way to stop it is to run away from the hero. But this hero generally has high movement speed, buys movement speed um, items, and this ultimate exorcism gives her extra movement speed. So basically what you do with ult the ultimate here, exorcism, is you pop this, and a bunch of ghosts come out, and they just do damage in an AoE. They kind of follow you around. They do damage to everything in that AoE, and they prioritize targets that you actually right-click. So you can see here, I'll right-click this uh, dummy target, and then it will mainly prioritize this. So you can take towers with this. It does insane damage to towers. It's so hard to fight into this hero, obviously, with this. And then you're spirit siphoning people. You're sustaining. You're doing all these kinds of things. It's so, so annoying to fight into this hero. The other thing that you can use is you can use Yule's Scepter. So here, I'll uh, spirit siphon these guys, and then I'll Yule's myself. I'm doing insane damage while I'm Yule's in the air because my ultimate's still running. My spirit siphon is still running as well, and that's just one of the insane strengths of this hero. Now, you didn't see it right there, but once the ultimate ends, all of the ghosts come back to Death Prophet, and then they heal her basically pretty much to full health. Now, it's not always full health, but you can just think of it as healing you to full health. Um, so... It's not just that this hero is doing insane damage uh, in the team fights, super hard to fight into, but if you're almost about to kill her and then her ultimate runs out, she just fools right, uh, heals right back up to full, even if you're about to kill her. So that's why one of the main ways to deal with her is either to just run away from her ultimate or to burst her down full to zero once she does pop that, because it's so, so annoying to fight into this hero otherwise. The other thing to keep in mind about this ability is that it's physical damage and it pierces spell immunity. So even though you're popping BKB to deal with Spirit Siphon, you're actually still taking damage from Exorcism and it obviously does insane damage to towers, like I said. So, this, um... This ability is still very, very good, unlike a lot of other spells. Most spells do magic damage, but some spells do physical, and this is one of those abilities that does do physical damage. So it does less damage with armor, so keep that in mind. It's not as good against heroes with high armor, but it goes through BKB, which can be very, very powerful, so that keep that in mind. So those are all of her normal abilities here in her ultimate, and you can see how she can be super powerful to fight into, like I've said many, many times. I will say and add a couple things here with the shard and the ag scepter is that the shard is really good it just adds another dynamic to the spirit siphon ability um, basically if you cast it on an enemy and they um, are spirit siphoned for two seconds they actually get feared and then they're forced to run away so it gives you a little bit of extra control a little bit of an extra reason to not fight into the hero it also gives you another charge on spirit siphon so that's just a little bit of extra dynamic for this hero you pretty much buy this all the time i will say the ags is pretty powerful as well it's just not bought as often recently but it just basically makes every single spell that you have and your right click a little bit stronger you just um do extra damage because every time you right click or cast an ability on an enemy or a tower um a ghost comes out like one of your exorcism ghosts comes out and does damage a single time now it's a little bit glitched here because the uh ghosts keep coming out and stay out but it's basically just a little bit of a way to make you more uh threatening with your right click and do extra damage while also being tankier with the stats and things like that so that is Death Prophet. That's how all of her abilities work in tandem and together. And you can see how she can be super strong as a team fighter. Super, super hard and annoying to fight into. So now that we understand her abilities, let's jump into a game and see how she's played. So now we're jumping into a game here of Quinn playing mid Death Prophet. And basically, Death Prophet's laning stage is rather simple. This hero has decent right click damage but a very kind of bad attack animation. It's kind of long. The uh, projectile takes a while to kind of come out, but the range for this hero is pretty good. But regardless, generally you're going to be using your right clicks plus your crypt swarm early on to secure CS plus harass the enemy. Really what you want to do is you saw him with that range creep is you want to kind of use this ability plus your right clicks to kind of hit the enemy while you're also hitting a creep that you're securing. So it's not one of these where you just want to use this or spam it constantly. You can see he's still using his right clicks and he's still using... Um, that primarily for harass damage. He's only kind of saving this to get these range creeps. Unfortunately, he gets stunned there and uh, gets the range creep denied. But regardless, this is basically how you want to be playing the early game in the laning stage. You can use your right clicks as a ranged hero to get a lot of harass in. And then you can see how he kind of went high ground and used his Spirit Siphon. Spirit Siphon is the other ability that's really going to help you in the laning stage. Now, obviously, he's against a Leshrac who has decent range as well. Good right click um, animation, these kinds of things. So he's not really going to be able to use his Spirit Siphon all that um, much in this lane, but you can see the uh, Leshrac's always kind of keeping his distance because especially against melee heroes, but even against ranged heroes, if they ever come up too far, if they ever get out of position against this hero, you're just going to use Spirit Siphon and then they automatically lose every trade. You can see he's already kind of winning trades against this uh, Leshrac by being able to spam Crypt Swarm, especially once it get to, gets to level 2, but if he ever got into melee range or close enough to cast a Spirit Siphon, you're just going to dominate lanes and uh, trade extremely well against almost every hero in the game. And that's honestly what you want to be doing on this hero. But otherwise, you just, you know, 
securing your CS. You're mainly playing for level 6, so he's getting his bottle, he's securing runes, he's securing CS, getting some harass damage in, kind of keeping his distance as well. He doesn't want to get stunned. Because um, you are vulnerable, you're an intelligence hero, you're a ranged hero, you're not super tanky early on, um, so just keep that in mind. You just kind of want to play this cat and mouse game, this distance game, while securing your CS and waiting for your level 6. Um... I would try to get aggressive on melee matchups, but it's matchup dependent. Um, if you're against ranged heroes, I would probably just try to play a little bit more passively, try to secure my level 6, because once you get level 6, that's really the time that you are going to shine. Now, I jumped ahead a minute or two here, and he's just about to get level 6 off of this wave, so he gets a level 6 with that Crypt Swarm here. And basically, once you hit level 6, you pretty much want to pop your ultimate almost immediately. Now, he does go over here because the wave's pushing in, and it's not the best time to pop his ultimate right there because of the waves and how they are, and he also wants to come clear the stack, so we'll speed it up a little bit. But, after he clears this, and he goes mid, he pretty much just, like, instantly pops the ultimate. Now, he has his, um... He has his uh, help there with the Marcy coming in for the support, but regardless, you kind of just want to be using it constantly. You can see they also have the Primal Beast coming in to help as well, and he gets a double kill because of that. Now, in your games, yes, you might not have the Marcy come, but I doubt that the enemy is going to come protect uh, <laughs> the tower either, because basically what happens is, once you pop this first ultimate, you can melt this tower. So you can see how you kind of want to take it immediately. You want to pop it as soon as possible so you can get your first ultimate to take the tower. If you don't get it, you at least want to get some damage so that your second ultimate, you can get the tower because it is decent. Um, there's a decent cooldown here. Um, 150 seconds, you see. That's pretty significant. So that's why you want to be using it like as quickly as possible. So you can see he didn't really get the tower. Um, there's only, you know, a little bit of chip damage, but they bought, brought three heroes there. He killed two of them and he, uh, he managed to force them to fortify. So it's very similar to like Pugna, DK, other heroes. The main thing you want to be doing is getting the tower once you hit six. So I jumped ahead to almost 10 minutes here, and this is just soon after his ultimate comes off of cooldown. Um, they did get aggressive onto him, and so he had to kind of back off and heal before he could use his second ultimate, but he's pretty much using his second ultimate almost directly after it came off cooldown. They go in with three heroes. You can see how they're focusing on mid, both teams, so aggressively because basically the enemy knows that if they don't focus on mid, this hero is just going to take the mid tower like so easily. So they bring a bunch of heroes mid, but thankfully Quinn and his team, they bring a bunch of heroes mid too, and they get the kills aggressively. He gets a triple kill, and then watch this tower melt. This is exactly exactly what you want to be doing on Death Prophet from mid. You can even do this on offlane. It's the same thing on the offlane. Once you hit that level 6 timing, you can just shred the tower. So you can see he gets the tower at 10 minutes, second ultimate. Um, you can do this reliably in probably every single game because I doubt that the enemy is going to bring three heroes mid every single time in the early portion of the game, especially at like 5 or 6 minutes. I highly doubt they're going to be bringing heroes mid to defend. This is a very high level game. And even in this high level game, he was able to get that tower at 10 minutes. So you can do this from the mid lane. You can do this from the off lane pretty much wherever you're playing Death Prophet once you hit 6. So now I jumped ahead a little bit here, and basically once you take that mid tier 1, and once you take the enemy um, bottom tier 1 or safe lane tier 1, you pretty much just want to group up with your team and use your ultimate off cooldown to try to take tier 2 towers and be super aggressive, because at this point in the game, um, from about 10 to 15 minutes, you are so, so strong. The enemy just can't fight into you against the Spirit Siphon. He also goes for BKB. First item, he has his Boots of Travel BKB. This hero is insanely strong. So, you know, his team groups up. He has his ultimate available. He just pops it. They go right for the Tier 2 tower, and they just absolutely shred it. This hero is all about taking map control, being super, super hard to fight into. Looks like he's even going to try to pressure out um, this wave and potentially even threaten to go high ground just to get some chip damage, but then he sees he can TP in on the catapult there, tries to, you know, basically just take map control, get the hero out of certain places of the jungle, you know, if they have vision, he can just be so strong, you can see how the Leshrac just has to run away immediately because this Death Prophet's ultimate's going, um, this is just what you want to be doing, you're so, so strong early, you don't want to be sitting back and passively farming too much, now, his ultimate is down now, um, he doesn't have it for another hundred some seconds, you can see how once it goes down, he force the Leshrac out of the jungle. He is being a little bit more passive. He's farming a little bit here. That's something you definitely can do. Um, so it's not like you always want to be super aggressive, but it is one of those things that once you have your ultimate, push the towers, group up with your team. You cannot be threatened, especially once you get this BKB at like, you know, 16 minutes or whenever it is. You're just so, so strong. You don't want to waste this timing. So we jumped ahead and they actually were on the back for a little bit, despite having some gold lead here because uh, they got 
picked off and they got called out of position, unfortunately. But uh, the enemy basically tried to use that small advantage getting those supports to go for the Roshan here. So you can see the Roshan is really low. The Night Stalker ends up going in. And this is just one thing that you want to be certain of when you're playing Death Prophet is if you have your ultimate available, you're not letting the enemy take Rosh. You're not the letting the enemy um, take objectives because you're just so powerful. So he jumps in here. Obviously, the CK is doing a ton of damage. But with his ultimate, with those Spirit Siphons, the Tiny just absolutely melts. And then they take the Rosh really easily. This hero is so good at... Uh, taking Roche, at taking objectives, at defending objectives and team fighting, that when you have your ultimate up, there's just no reason not to engage the enemy. Like, you want to be five manning, you want to be grouping up and fighting and five manning and pushing towers and these kinds of things. So that's just a perfect example of how, you know, good this hero can be at fighting around the Roshan. Now, this is the last clip I'm going to show you, and that's largely because this hero's actually straightforward and simple. You know, you fight Roche, you fight the objectives, they're waiting for the second Roche here. I just kind of want to show you how to team fight with this hero, and how effective this hero can be, especially once the enemy doesn't have BKBs. And even when they pop BKBs, you can still do a ton of damage. So, they're waiting for second Roche, the enemy ends up smoking and going in onto the uh, CK there. He jumps in with his blink, he pops his ultimate, he uses... Um, his abilities here and then you can see he's still doing a ton of damage with his ultimate through those bkbs he's not able to spirit siphon but as soon as the bkbs end there for the enemy they just absolutely melt and there's nothing they can do it's also so so hard to uh basically run away from this hero he obviously has a night stalker on the team as well and these two heroes in combo when they have their ultimates up they're just impossible to fight into as you saw there um this is a perfect example of how to take team fights on the hero and then once you win team fights you can transition these into buildings as well and that's just exactly how you want to be playing death prophet it's kind of like not night stalker in this way of like when you have your ultimate up you are such a beast it's when you don't have your ultimate up like right now after this fight that you have to be a little bit careful so that's honestly the main thing, the main understanding with the, this hero. Otherwise, you're just casting your abilities, you're silencing, you're spirit siphoning people in the AoE, you're trying to buy survivability items. He bought Blink to try to initiate, to try to get into the fight more effectively, all these kinds of things. Um, and this is just the perfect example of how to play this hero. This hero's not that complicated, it's just really strong in all the ways that are pretty obvious with the ultimate and the spirit siphon. And the things like I've been harping on and mentioning before, if there's really no complication, it's not like a high skill cap hero. You just gotta be straightforward, deliberate, team fight around your good abilities, and you will um, secure games, secure Roche, secure objectives, these kinds of things. So that's my Death Prophet guide. I hope that helps everybody um, understand this hero, play this hero a little bit better. It's a really, really strong hero right now. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. Um, if you haven't already, join the Discord. We do replay reviews every Friday and community games on Saturday. Join the Patreon if you haven't already. Uh, if you just want to support me, see more content like this in the future, or if you want coaching, I also offer coaching there as well. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.